Hey everybody, happy Thursday evening live tutorial stream. How's everybody doing wherever you are out there on the internet? I hope everyone had a fantastic day. We had a great day here at The Beating Dreams. We got to see some fun friends who we haven't seen in a while, um, which is always great. And now I get to play with torches on the internet. So really, there's nothing to complain about. Our project for this evening is this one. So I call this semi-hand made and um so the reason i call it semi handmade is because i do not hi ace yes it is fire time but first it's allison talking time and then it's fire time um so i first of all don't have any of the equipment to carve waxes and cast things and even if i did i'm really absolutely crap as a sculptor like i i just can't you know, take an image from my mind and render it in wax to have it cast. So luckily for me, there are plenty of people out there who have that talent, who, you know, work for other companies and make things like this adorable little bat charm. This is a Nina Designs charm. I love Nina Designs. They are, first of all, they have fantastic merchandise. Second of all, they are the sweetest people ever. And I have a long history of slicing and dicing their charms to create other things. So this is a little, just a mini bat charm and that I'm going to use to create a ring this evening. And I'm going to take a little bezel cup and I'm going to put a carnelian stone right on top of the head of the bat where the loop is right now. So basically what I'm doing is I'm cribbing off of other people's work. I'm purchasing charms and castings that are already made and then incorporating them into my hand fabricated jewelry. So, you know, where you fall on that as an artist is totally your deal. And if that's not something you're comfortable with, then that's totally fine. But I like being able to take those multi-dimensional elements and incorporate them into my work. Um, and once again, it's something I can't produce myself. So it's super helpful to know how to how to use something that wasn't necessarily um, intended for that purpose in a fabrication project. Um, so charms are good, pendants are good, earrings also, you can take the earrings, chop off the posts, that's a really good, cool, solderable component um, as well. So, you know, it's helpful, I think, to try and start to look at things. Hi, Lori outside of the box of what they were intended for and, and instead to just see the potential of what they could be. So tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. So I'm going to be making a ring. So for my ring, I have my little bat charm. I have some 14 gauge round wire. I have some extra easy sterling silver solder and then I have, um, if they want to come out and play, my little carnelian, and then a bezel cup that is the appropriate size for my carnelian. And that's really all I need as far as supplies for my ring. As far as tools go, it is a soldering tutorial, so that means you're going to need your whole soldering setup. That means torch, soldering surface, um, flux. Where the flux is my flux? I think I took it home and never brought it back. Um, that's okay, I have the, the mama, big mama jar. Um, flux, pickle and a pickle pot or a tumbler. I'm actually going to wind up tumbling my pieces tonight, so I'm not going to need my pickle pot. Um, you're going to need your hand tools, round nose, chain nose, what, wire cutters, and you're also going to need a ring mandrel. That's this guy right here. And a rawhide mallet is definitely helpful. And also to set your stone, you're going to need a prong pusher. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff I've forgotten that I will remember. And I'll let you guys know when I remember it that I have forgotten it in this list. First, I'm going to go put a dab of water in my flux. Be right back. So the flux that I like to use, and I'll talk about what flux is in a second, but the brand I like to use 
is Handy Flux. And I like it because it's a paste flux. It's very easy to use, very easy to position. You don't kind of have to deal with it running all over the place and sort of just creating a general mess in your work area. But it does get dehydrated, even if you've got the lid on and everything. So the cool thing about it is it's really easy to thin it out with just some regular water. So I'm just returning my flux to a workable consistency for this evening's tutorial. And I do need a brush with which to apply that, so that's going to be pretty much the crappiest, dirtiest, nastiest paintbrush in my paintbrush arsenal. What, don't you have a paintbrush arsenal? Well, what's wrong with you? So we're going to start by modifying this charm so we can use it, and that is going to require our wire cutters. So what we need to do, if we are going to use this as a, a solderable component, is basically we need to get rid of this loop, but we need to try not to decapitate our cute little baddie when we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to get in here with my cutters, and I'm going to snip. I'm going to try and follow the contour of the little bat head. And um, something that you can do, like once you've snipped a bit, and you're just down to like the very last little thread by which it's hanging on, is you can grab your loop and just um, bend it back and forth with the pliers, and it'll break off. And so now I have my little, my little batty, and his loop is gone. There's a little bit of rough edge at the top that you can see. Oh dear. I hate when technology is being a pain. I was just cursing at technology earlier today. So then I can take a file and I can just smooth down the rough spots on my little baddie's head. Now here's a trick. If you're trying to sand or file something and your fingers just feel too giant to actually hold it, this is where a ring clamp, this tool here, is going to come in super handy. So what I can actually do is I can put my little bat charm in my ring clamp, like so, and then take the wedge, put it in the back, and... Uh, push that down and now my ring clamp is holding my charm instead of my fingers and then I can take my file and I can go in here on his little baddie head and I can get rid of this um, this little burr right here try not to stab yourself with the file just a word of advice Okay, so now I've cleaned up Mr. Batty's little head there. And so now let's go ahead and put his little stone on. So for this I'm going to, I think that, oh, hey, I found the ear wires I lost this morning. Guess what? They're on the floor. That's why I couldn't find them. But one, two, there they are right there on the floor. Mm. The camera doesn't really reach down there, so. Okay, so this I'm going to need my soldering surface. And I'm going to need my bat. Alright, so there's my little bat on my soldering surface. And then I'm going to need my bezel cup. So the bezel cup is a little die struck cup that is going to hold. <laughs> oh Heather, don't make me laugh. <laughs> now I'm not going to stop thinking about that. So I blame Heather. Um, so I've got my bezel cup here. This is a little die, st die struck cup. It's going to hold my little stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flux my bezel cup and I'm going to flux my bat
And then I'm going to go ahead and sweat some solder onto the edge of my bezel cup. Now typically when we're soldering a bezel cup onto something we'll sweat solder onto the back of it but we're not soldering it onto. Well hi Corvus! I'm making a bat ring. I realize it's not a corvid ring but it's kind of corvid adjacent to say. Um, so typically when we are doing something like this we would sweat solder onto the back but we're not going to solder the back onto anything. We're going to sweat solder onto the side because we're going to solder the side onto the head of our little bat. So that means I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of easy solder. Fairly small, okay? When you're cutting solder, you don't need giant pieces, okay? So just a tiny little bit, even smaller than that, like a sixteenth of an inch. There we go, that's going to be plenty. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick transfer this solder onto my bezel cup. And I am a, it is officially, it's, I mean, we're, we're past the, good lord, it's almost the 1st of October, of course it's officially Halloween time. Though if I were in charge, it would be Halloween time the entire year. So, if you're going to work with a torch, please make sure you observe safety precautions if you're not familiar with how to use a torch safety. Um, I do have a short a five point safety lecture that you can view. Um, just type exclamation point S safety into the Twitch chat. That will take you to that lecture. Um, or there are tons of tutorials and things on the internet about getting your own home soldering studio set up. Uh, the main thing here is just be aware of what's around you, be aware of your flame, be aware of what your flame could potentially damage or set on fire. And if you're creating a home workspace, definitely consult some professionals and make sure that you've got all the appropriate ventilation and everything to, to make your space as safe as possible. So I'm going to pick transfer this solder onto my bezel cup. That means I'm going to use my solder pick and I'm actually going to take my piece of solder that is off camera. There we go. I'm going to take my piece of solder that's here, I'm going to ball it up, and then I'm going to transfer it onto here with my pick, let it flow, and then I'm going to take this and solder it onto my bat. So we'll see how that works out for me. So I'm going to light my torch, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my solder, and I'm going to heat it until it turns into a little ball, like that, and then I'm going to use my pick to just scoop it up. So now my solder is on my pick. Now I'm going to touch it to the side of my bezel cup where I want it to flow and I'm going to heat my bezel cup until my solder comes off my pick, sticks to the metal, see it right there, and then I'm going to heat it till it flows. And now I'm going to take a pause and grab a tweezers and grab my bezel cup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. I want to make sure then I'm aware where the solder is, which is right there, and then I'm going to move it into position against the head of my bat, like so, and see how it kind of nestles in there pretty nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat the whole thing until that solder flows, binds the two together. Trying, of course, not to melt any of the components. There we go. So what I was looking for, like how I knew that happened, is um, you may not have been able to see it because the camera's not that good, but basically there was a, a, just a line of solder that I saw flow right here um, in between the bat and the bezel cup. Bat and the bezel cup, I swear that's some kind of movie or book, mystery book, just waiting to happen. Of course there will be a shiny gem on this ring, Corvus, come on. What string do you think you're on? We always put shiny gems on everything. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the wire I'm going to use for my band, which is going to be 14 gauge sterling silver. And this right now is just a random piece of sterling silver. Um, I think it's about three and a half inches long. Um, I'm going to I'm going to measure and cut it down to size after I solder it on. So what I want is I want this piece of wire to be relatively straight. And my goal is going to be to, I 
goal, first of all, is going to be to straighten it all out. Seriously, beads on everything. I mean, see previous streams redecorating. Like, do not be shy with the beads in your life. More beads equals more happiness. Just saying. All right, so I'm going to take my my little little back guy. He's right there, and I'm going to flex the back. And I'm going to take my wire. I'm going to flex the middle section of that. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a second and sweat some solder onto the back of my bat, uh, which means I need a cutter. So I'm going to take the cutter. I'm going to cut another very small piece of solder. So once again, you don't need a whole lot. So just like a sixteenth of an inch, you see that there is sufficient. I'm going to grab my tweezers and I'm going to place that solder right on the back of my bat. Okay, because I'm going to want my ring band to kind of go right across here. So now I'm going to go ahead and heat that solder until it flows and every, everything is then ready for me to bond together my ring. There we go. Okay, so my solder load. I'm gonna take my ring band. I'm gonna lay it across. And the important thing here is you wanna make sure it's contacting all the way across. Rude. I literally had it there and it just decided to move itself. Like I said, Rude. Okay, now we're going to heat until we see that solder flow and bond those two together. Okay, there is a mosquito flying around, and let me just tell you how hard it is not to just start chasing it with my torch. <laughs> Alright, so now that's all bonded together. And there we go. Okay, so this is the beginning of my... But it's so close. I could just set it on fire right now. Do it. No, no, don't, don't. No, please don't. <laughs> All right, so there's my bat ring. And now what I need to do is I need to set this aside for a second to cool. Because if I try and touch it in this state, then I'm going to be in a worse state than that. It's a mosquito, Corvus. Who among us is not violent when it comes to mosquitoes? I mean, I know Buddhists and Jains who are like, don't harm anything at all in your life except for fucking mosquitoes. You can kill those assholes. I am not even kidding. <laughs> I mean, the just... Talk about, you know, universally hated species. I mean, it must be terrible for your self-esteem to be a mosquito, though. I think if you are a mosquito, you probably don't know how much everybody hates you. You're just like, I'm a mosquito. I'm going to suck your blood. I'm going to make lots of babies, and we're going to take over the planet. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, that's what the mosquito brain is saying. Whereas everyone else is, is, is once again, like, die, motherfuckers. Kill them with fire. <laughs> All right. So now my little bat guy is cool enough to touch. So now I get to form this into a ring, and then I'm going to trim it and solder it together. So this is where my ring mandrel comes into play. And even though I've annealed this wire by soldering on it, I still want to go smaller than the size I want because it's still probably going to spring up a bit. So I want a size 7 ring, so I'm going to go to a size 5. Put my little batty on there, and then wrap that wire around my mandrel and you want to overlap it like so and then what we're going to do is we are going to grab our rawhide mallet and what I'm going to try to do is actually see how the bat is is still pretty straight and he's got these wings that poke out I want to actually try and curve this bat 
against the ring manual. Now I need to be really careful when I do this not to collapse my setting. So I'm just going to really gently tap my little bat and his wings. And see how I've got now a curve? So this wing here is curved against this, whereas this one is sticking out. So this one's going to catch on things, this one's not. Now I'm actually going to have to do this off camera because that angle is just not workable for me. Sorry. And I want to make sure I keep it up at this smaller size. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Yes, don't set anything on fire except the things that you are crafting. That's fair. This is my concentrating face in case anyone was wondering. Okay, so this is the point of going two sizes. Smaller is, so my wire sprung up, so all I have to do now is just sort of shimmy this down to my size seven, and I've got, I've got the length of wire that I need. Now, I'm gonna grab a marker. And I'm just going to mark across the center back here because this is my cut line. This is where I'm going to cut to make my size 7 ring. And I'm going to take my wire cutters. And remember, we're going to flush cut. So that means the flat side of my cutters is going to go towards what is remaining. So this is my waist. This is what's staying right here. I'm going to snip that off. And then I'm going to flip my ring around and do the same thing on my other wire and now what I need to do and notice that's definitely not in the center back if I do a good enough job soldering it's not gonna matter take my file and I want to just go ahead and file these ends so that they are flat so that I can solder them together And my goal here is I want these two ends to meet flush with no space in between. At this point, don't worry so much if it's if it's going out of round. You'll be able to re-round it before you finish it. Alright, so your goal for your joint is, of course, to have it be as unobtrusive as possible. It means you did a good job of lining it up and flush cutting it. So there is my joint right there. You can see it, but it's not super obvious. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to solder that together. So I'm going to grab my soldering station back. Haha. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna flex that joint. Grab one more piece of extra easy solder. And this time I don't have to pick transfer it. And um, what I can actually do with this is I can take Okay, so there's my solder right there. So I can actually take my ring and I can set the joint on top of the solder. That's a little bit easier. Then I'm gonna heat the whole thing till that solder flows. Okay, presbyopia sucks, just saying. 
I know half you guys are half my age, but it's coming for you eventually. But I did manage to solder my ring shut. So now once again, I just need to set that aside and let it cool down for a minute. So let's see, tonight is oof, obviously Torch Thursday because I'm playing with fire. Tomorrow night is Free Form Friday. That means I'm going to pick a project uh, completely out of thin air and I'm going to try and do the whole thing from start to finish on the air since I am probably going to be free forming from Beating Dreams actual tomorrow night instead of from Beating Dreams remote. I'm going to guess that it's probably going to be a soldering project since I can't really do those at Beating Dreams remote, but we shall see. I might pull something completely out of my ass for free form. And then Saturday, we are going to be doing the tutorial that we were supposed to do yesterday, the upcycled flatware bracelet, because I actually did remember finally to bring flatware to work. And then we will be doing another live sale of new merchandise on Saturday as well. So don't miss the rest of the week on the Beating Dream stream because there's lots of fun stuff going on. All right, now this is cooled down. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my ring mandrel and I'm going to grab my rawhide mallet. I'm going to use that to pound it back into a round shape. Once again, don't hit your setting, okay? Because um, that is going to make it near impossible to set your stone. So you want to, you know, you want to stop your hitting right there. And with a bigger rawhide mallet, that can be difficult. They do make little tiny rawhide mallets and that are a little bit more precise. So it's just a question of do you want force or precision? Because in this instance, you do have to pick one. You cannot have both. All right, so there is my rounded out bat ring. And the last thing I'm gonna do is set this down. So I'm gonna grab my ring clamp back and that's something that I did not put on the supply list, but now that we've used twice. So this is a ring clamp. Well, hi, Silver. Um, so this is a ring clamp, and it's a really great tool for just holding anything that it's difficult to hold in your hands. So I'm just going to set my little bat in my ring clamp like so. Stick my wedge in the back. Make sure it's in there nice and securely. So that I've got my, my little back guy in there. I'm feeling so much better, Silver. And you guys were all so sweet last night. Basically telling me to get the hell off the air and go home. But yes, I got a lot of sleep. And I'm actually currently on no meds at all. So I'm, I am I sound approximately the same, I think, as I did last night. But last night I was on massive doses of decongestants and antihistamines and... Um, expectorants and um, cough suppressants and today I am on nothing I'm on no drugs and so I'm, I'm really happy about that um, will we be getting more of the silver Halloween trinkets this year well that's a good question Corvus um, I think since you've asked for them I might just have to thank you silver and I am I also am glad I'm feeling better though I did have you know, it's that unfortunate end of, of like a bronchitis or upper respiratory thing where everything that's in your lungs has to, it, it's got to come out. So I had the most disgusting coughing fit when I was in the middle of a lesson earlier today. It was just, it was pretty bad. But um, eventually it will all expel from my body and then I will, you know, stop having the super sexy fit, coughing fits like I've been smoking for 20 years. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, put this gem into my setting. So this is a cabochon carnelian. So a cabochon, for anybody who's not familiar, is a stone that is flat on one side, that's the side that's against my finger, and rounded on the other side. So when we're setting this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it so that the flat side is up, and then I'm going to attempt notice the word attempt because the first thing I did was drop it. I'm going to attempt to set this in here. So the flat side goes down into the bezel cup and then you want to make sure it goes all the way in there. And is completely level, which it is. 
Now we're going to use our pusher to just roll that bezel over our stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pusher and I'm going to push my bezel in and down against my stone. And then I'm going to go to the opposite end and I'm going to push and down against my stone. So when you look at that, what you're going to see when I show it to you in a minute, Okay, the worst thing about this is it's like I can't see the screen without my glasses. Um, so what I've done is, man, okay, that's annoying. I, there's not, mm, not enough room. better. So what you can see what I've done is I basically smashed the bezel in four sides to start setting my stone. Now I'm going to go with my pusher and I'm going to work on bending in all four of these corners. So corner, 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 corner. Thank you for closing the door, Carol. You're welcome. Um, so now my job is to take my pusher and go just around and around this kind of misshapen bezel until my stone is totally set. So I'm just going to go around. And again, your push is in and down. The down is very important. Um, I don't have to worry too much about my stone because this is a carnelian. It's pretty sturdy, so don't have to worry about breaking it. And this is actually one of the techniques that works best for me, is actually holding it in against my chest. It just allows me to get more leverage. If you have a bench pin, you embrace it in your bench pin, but just holding it, holding it in really close to me is a technique that works great for me. As somebody who doesn't have a permanent jeweler's bench, so I don't really, you know, have a bench pin set up that I can just rest it against. Keeping everything close into my body, I find, works best for me. You do whatever works best for you. <laughs> so Corvus says, wait, you take your glasses off to see better. Yes, so I am nearsighted, so my glasses correct so I can see distance, but the thing about when you get older is um it your focal distance becomes shorter so i can i can naturally see close up um without my glasses you know at about this at about this range i can focus but as your eyes get older you can't get that close range focus while you have your far sight or near sight correction on yeah it's a weird thing called presbyopia basically it means your eyes are getting old and this is why um, my next step is definitely going to be bifocals because then you have a distance vision up here and you have close-up vision down here <laughs> Ace says he sees a Carol <laughs> yes I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news Corvus I would never be the bearer of bad news ever but I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Yes, it, it does actually happen as you get older. But it's different for everybody. Like if you, you know, if you if you have 20-20 vision now, then what's probably gonna happen to you as you get older is eventually gonna need reading glasses to magnify and allow you to focus close in. Um, and, and that's basically what bifocals are, is it's like your distance prescription on half of it and then your, your reading glasses prescription 
on the bottom. At this point, I, you know, I need my prescription for distance. I don't really need any prescription for close up, but my eyes can't focus close up um, anymore through my distance prescription. So yes, the up the upshot of all of this is getting old sucks, but it does beat the alternative. Also, I made a ring. I made a bat, a bat with a little carnelian, super cute. So, I mean, you'll notice that this is all kind of cruddy and black. So, um, here's a cheat because I do a lot of, um, I do a lot of classes, obviously. That's what most of you guys know me for. So, um, general wisdom is don't ever put gemstones in a tumbler because you never know what's going to happen. But the actual fact of the matter is that there are some stones that are fine in the tumbler and so so that I don't have to waste time pickling and steel wooling my 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 pieces a lot of times I'll pick stones that can go in the tumbler because then I can just finish my piece for class and then throw it in the tumbler and let it get polished so that's what I'm gonna do um, this evening is I'm gonna take this whole bat ring carnelian and all I'm gonna put it in the tumbler it's gonna get nice and shiny and I should be able to show it to you all tomorrow for freeform Friday now if you are using a stone that's not amenable to the tumbler, what you would do is you would step back a couple steps to the point before I had set the stone, you would tumble your entire completed bat ring with everything but the stone until it was shiny, and then you would set the stone after that. And that's typically how it works when you're fabricating is the stone is the literal last thing to get put in place, okay? So everything happens before you set your stone. All the soldering, all the polishing, all the filing, forming, sanding, whatever, your stone's the very last thing to go in. But once again, I'm cheating because I wanted to finish this on stream, but also tumble it. So yes, this is our semi-homemade, come on, it focused for a second, focus on it, bat ring. It loves you. It says thank you so much for hanging out with us on the Beating Dream stream for our torch, our first Torch Thursday class in a couple of weeks. So I really do appreciate each and every one of you hanging out with me on Torch Thursday for Semi Handmade. And once again, that's, you know, it's just that easy to take something. And, and there is, you know, you do need to make sure when you're doing Semi Handmade that the things you're soldering together are all sterling silver, okay? If they're plated, or filled then you're gonna wind up with all kinds of weird scorch marks so sterling on sterling on sterling that's that's the deal but yeah thanks for hanging out that says thank you and we'll see you all back on this channel twitch.tv forward slash beating dream tomorrow at 6 p.m. for free form Friday not sure what I'm doing but I'm sure it's gonna be something fun and then of course Saturday we'll be back with that upcycled flatware class plus a live merchandise sale. I'm going to have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we'll see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream, tomorrow at 6. Bye!